Electrochemistry 30. This is our sixth lesson in the Electrochemistry unit. This is Corrosion. In this lesson, we will explore corrosion of metals and more specifically, the corrosion of iron and how to treat and protect against corrosion. Corrosion of metals. In this video, we are going to learn about corrosion. Imagine four objects, an aluminium toy, an iron nail, a copper pipe, and a gold ring are left out in the open for many years. Which of the four materials do you think will be in the best condition when they are rediscovered? Pause, think, and continue when ready. If you think the gold ring is likely to be in the best condition, you're right. The copper pipe and the iron now will appear in a worse condition, but the aluminium toy is also preserved very well. Most likely, the iron now will appear in the worse condition. This is because of corrosion. Corrosion is described as formation of compounds on the surface of a metal when it is exposed to air and or water or an electrolyte like salt water. Typically, once a metal corrodes, it forms compounds known as oxides or hydrated oxides. The now made of iron rusted. This, by the way, is the only time you should use the term rusting. All other metals are considered as having been corroded when they react with water and or oxygen in the air. But why would the now be more corroded than the aluminium toy, the copper pipe or the gold ring? Have you any ideas? Pause the video and continue when ready. The reason is the metals all have different reactivities. Iron corrodes faster because it is more reactive than the copper and the gold. But you may be wondering, well, why didn't the aluminium toy corrode the fastest? The truth is, the aluminium is more reactive than the iron, so it reacts fastest with the oxygen from the air, forming aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide is very unreactive because once the oxide layer is formed on the surface, it binds very tightly to the surface of the metal, so no cracks can form and cause further corrosion. Here's a challenge. How might you use this idea to protect the iron now? The answer is that by covering a metal like iron with another more reactive metal, like zinc, is that the zinc forms the zinc oxide layer quickly. The iron underneath is protected. This process is called galvanizing and can last up to 100 years. If you think on the metal on a bike, corrosion can be prevented by painting the frame, a static part, or greasing the metal parts like the chain which moves or by covering it with a thin layer of a less reactive metal like tin, copper or gold but that would be very expensive. Corrosion or more specifically the rusting of iron. Corrosion is the spontaneous oxidation of some metals. In nature some metals corrode due to the presence of oxygen in the air. Let's take a look at the two half reactions in the process of iron rusting. First, we have the oxidation half reaction. Solid iron is broken down into Fe2 plus and two electrons. Since this is oxidation, we can consider Fe solid as the anode. In our reduction half reaction, we have oxygen from the air plus water gains electrons forming OH minus. In the process of corrosion, the reduction half reaction never changes. It will always be one half O2 plus H2O gains two electrons to form two OH minus ions. If we put these two half reactions together, we have the chemical reaction of iron rusting. Iron to hydroxide, which is the product, is further oxidized to iron three hydroxide, 
which is then dehydrated to form a mixture of iron-3 hydroxide and a hydrated iron-3 oxide. The hydrated iron-3 oxide has the reddish-brown color, which is known as rust. Corrosion of iron. Both oxygen gas and water are required for the rusting of iron. However, this process is accelerated by electrolytes, acidic solutions, mechanical stress, and contact with other less active metals. Prevention and treatment of corrosion. Let's think about cars for a moment. The car that you've had in mind was likely painted with your favorite color. The paint is not only there to make your car look pretty, but it has a more important purpose, to prevent rusting. When iron and steel are exposed to oxygen and moisture, rusting will occur. Rusting describes the corrosion of iron and steel. The term corrosion is used to describe the breakdown of a metal when exposed to the environment. When we say a metal corrodes, we mean that it has reacted with water and oxygen from the environment to form their respective oxides. We can demonstrate this using a simple experiment. Place an iron nail in four test tubes. Fill one with regular tap water until the nail is submerged. Fill another with regular tap water and add half a spoonful of sodium chloride, regular table salt. Shake from side to side to ensure that sodium chloride fully dissolves. Fill the third test tube with recently boiled water and add a thin layer of oil. When we boil the water, we remove any dissolved oxygen and the layer of oil prevents any oxygen from further dissolving. In the last test tube, add a spoonful of calcium chloride. Calcium chloride removes moisture or water. So in the first test tube, the nail is exposed to oxygen and moisture. In the second test tube, the nail is exposed to oxygen, moisture, and salt. So in the third test tube, the nail is only exposed to water. In the fourth test tube, the nail is exposed only to oxygen. Stopper all four test tubes with a rubber bung and let stand for a couple of days. You will find that the nails in the first and second test tubes have rusted. In particular, the nail in the second test tube has rusted more than the nail in the first test tube, and the rust has likely flaked off. You may see a reddish-brown precipitate at the bottom of these tubes. The nails in the third and fourth test tubes have not rusted. So what has happened here? The iron has undergone an oxidation reaction, forming hydrated iron trioxide or rust. Salt and acid act as a catalyst for this reaction, which is why the nail in the second test tube formed more rust than the nail in the first test tube. Rusting can be very costly if we have to constantly replace these items made of iron and steel. Rust can be prevented if we paint the areas exposed to oxygen and moisture. This is done on many bicycles and cars. Another method to prevent rust is by placing a layer of oil or grease. This is done on many bicycle chains. It helps lubricate the moving parts, which reduces friction and slows down the rusting process. Another way to prevent rusting is a sacrificial protection method called galvanizing. Have a look at this reactivity table. Zinc is more reactive than iron. When exposed to oxygen and moisture, zinc will corrode faster than iron. So if we put them together, zinc protects iron but is sacrificing itself, hence the term sacrificial protection. This method is applied to prevent rusting on ships. The oxidation of zinc can be described using this following equation. So besides preventing rusting, there is another advantage to this galvanizing process. 
the formed zinc oxide layer can be removed, and the freshly exposed zinc can corrode once again, thereby further protecting the iron or steel hull. Protective coatings. Covering a surface with paint or another coating will protect against corrosion. This type of protection will only work as long as the entire surface is completely covered. Corrosion will then only occur if the surface of the substance is exposed. Zinc plating, also known as galvanizing of a steel or iron pipe, provides great protection against corrosion. It provides a protective layer and is also preferably oxidized. That brings us to cathodic protection, another metal that is a stronger reducing agent, therefore lower on the redox table, is sacrificed and becomes the anode when connected to iron. The other metal is oxidized at the anode. The iron then becomes the cathode, which will be inert, and the electrolyte can be moisture in the ground or salt present in the oceans. Iron is protected when it acts as the cathode because it is not going through oxidation. Examples of sacrificial anodes are zinc and magnesium. Note how both substances are stronger reducing agents when compared to iron. Corrosion Laboratory both of the following substances will be provided in an agar plate when testing. Ferroxyl indicator contains potassium ferricyanide, which turns blue to indicate the presence of Fe2+. Fe2 plus would be a product of the oxidation of iron. Phenolphthalein is also present in the agar solution. It turns pink in the presence of OH-. Remember, OH- is a product of the reduction reaction of oxygen and water. If we look at the two examples provided here, we have an iron nail. Both iron nails are wrapped with a different metal. We are trying to determine which of the metals will protect the iron nail from corrosion. Just by looking at the colors present in the agar solution, we can determine what reactions are occurring. If we look at our first nail, we can only see the presence of pink. That tells us that corrosion is happening because we are forming OH minus but we are not seeing a blue color. Therefore, that tells us that iron is not corroding, that the metal that is wrapped around the iron must be protecting iron, and therefore we are witnessing the corrosion of the metal that is wrapped around iron. If we look at the second nail, we can see two colors, pink and blue. Again, Pink tells us that OH- is present, therefore corrosion is happening. But we are also seeing blue, which tells us that there is the presence of Fe2+. Therefore, that tells us that iron is corroding, and the metal that is wrapped around iron is not protecting it. Moving forward, we will explore the unit of organic chemistry.